back to today's episode. Scoring 90 and above is very, very simple, but just that you've not yet understood how John normally asks your questions and how to tackle physics questions with limited time. In this video, I'm going to give you a detailed explanation of most likely jam questions you are going to expect in this forthcoming exam. If you are watching this channel for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button to get notified each time I post videos. With no further ado, let's get right into the video. A 500 kilogram car, which was initially at rest, traveled with an acceleration of 5 meters per second square. Its kinetic energy after 4 seconds was what? Now we have the following options. Option A, 10 power 5 joules. Option B, 2.5 times 10 raised power 3 joules. Option C, 2 times 10 raised power 3 joules. Option D, 5 times 10 raised power 3 joules. Now looking at this particular question, it says a 5 kilogram car which was initially at rest that means this particular body is a car and it has a mass of 5 kilograms. So understanding the question is the first step and stating the parameters is the second step so you can understand what you are looking for and the formula that you use to solve that particular problem. So let's go. So from this question, our mass is given as 500 kilograms. Alright. So our M is equals to 500 kilograms. Then it was initially at rest. You know what is initially at rest? That means the car was not moving. Okay, initially it was at rest. Once a body is at rest, its initial velocity u equals zero. That means our u is equals zero. So, okay, then it traveled with an acceleration of five meters per second squared. That becomes my a. Okay, so I have my a to be five meters per second square and the time is giving us four seconds now the question says calculate the kinetic energy now you can see that the body was actually moving and kinetic energy is energy in motion now we cannot calculate the kinetic energy because we don't have the velocity here from the parameters we have so the first thing that will come to your mind is this what is the formula for kinetic energy so let's go Ke is equals to half mv square, right? Now, from this particular formula, we don't have the velocity here. So, I'm going to use the parameters we have to get the velocity. Now, we are looking for v, which is final velocity. So, let's look at the first equation of motion, which says that v equals u plus at. Now, this alone can actually give us our velocity. Anything we got from the velocity, we are going to put it here to solve for the kinetic energy. I hope that is clear. Okay, so we have V is equals to, remember, the body started at rest. That means our initial velocity U equals zero. It says zero plus, my A is given as five, and my time is given as what? Four. Okay, now by the sum we multiply, we have that my Final velocity is equals to 20 meters per second. Okay, now if this is 20 meters per second, let's proceed to solve for our kinetic energy. Now, using the formula, I have Ke is equal to half mv square. Now, so let's go. We have 1 over 2 multiplied by my mass is given as 500. We have this is 500 multiplied by. My velocity is given as what? Well, 20. The one, the one I just got now. So we have, this is 20 square, right? So let's proceed. We have 1 over 2 multiplied by 500 multiplied by 20 square is the same thing as saying 20 times 20, right? Which should give rise to 400. Now something can actually cancel. If to cancel itself 1, if to cancel 400, it's going to give us 200. 200, right? So by the time we have 500 multiplied by 200 is going to give us 1000000. Zero, 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 zero. This is my kinetic energy. And if I want to change to standard form, I can say this is what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? Now this is equivalent to 1.0 times 10 to the power of what? 5 joules. And this is my kinetic energy. 
I hope that is clear. So if you see this type of question in your exam, this is how you are going to solve it. In most cases, kinetic energy or energy question, it is being associated with what equations of motion. So you should know your equations of motion very, very well. Is that okay? And from what you have gotten so far, the correct answer to this question is option A. An object is moving with a velocity of 5 meters per second. At what height must a similar body be situated to have a potential energy equal in value with the kinetic energy of the moving body? Do you get the question? Then option A, we have 20.0 meters. Option B, 1.3 meters. Option C, 1.0 meters. And option D, 25.0 meters. This question said that an object is moving at a velocity of 5 meters per second. At what height will another body be situated so that it can have equal potential energy and kinetic energy? So now, what are we looking for? We are looking for what? The height. So let's take the parameters. For the first parameters we have, we have that our final velocity is equal to 5 meters per second. So let's go. Velocity is 5 meters per second. Okay. Now from this question, we have that G, which is constant, is equal to 10 meters per second square. Now we are looking for height. Okay. But the question says, at what height will potential energy equals kinetic energy? Now, what is potential energy? Potential energy is mg watt h. Why kinetic energy is half mv square, right? Now, looking at this question, we don't have mass. So that means the mass will cancel out each other. So we cancel the two masses. So I have gh is equals to 1 v square so let's put in what we have my g is constant i have what 10 multiplied by h right now this is equals to 1 over 2 times my v is 5 what square so when you multiply you have what 10 h is equals to 1 over 2 times 25. now to get the height i will say 10h is equals to 1 times 25 is 25. So this is 25 over what? 2, right? I can say that this is over 1 cross multiply. 2 times 10h is equals to 25. So I'm going to get this as to be 20 is equals to 25. So the next thing I'm going to do is to divide both sides by the coefficient of h, which is 20. So I divide both sides by what? 20 by 20. Now when you divide, my h is equals to 1.25 watt meter. Then approximately, it's going to give us 1.3 meters. I hope that is clear. So if you have this type of question, that potential energy equals kinetic energy, you're looking for the height. This is how you're going to solve it. I hope that is clear. Now from what you have gotten so far, the correct option in this question is option B. Calculate the pressure of water at the bottom of a pool 6 meters deep. If the density of water is 1000 kilograms per meter cube, I are giving G to be 10 meters per second square. Option A is 5 times 10 raised to the power 4 newton per meter square. Option B is 6 times 10 raised to the power 4 newton per meter square. Option C is 4 times 0 to the power 4 newton per meter square. And option D is 6 times 0 to the power 2 newton per meter square. Solving this question, you must understand what is pressure. What is pressure? Pressure is equal to force over area. Or, let's see, pressure P is equal to force over area. Or, pressure is equal to rho GH. What is rho? Rho is density. Rho is density. Okay. Then G is what? Acceleration due to gravity. IH H is height. Okay. We have the density of water. We have the acceleration due to gravity, which are constant, and we have the height. So putting all those things together, we can get our pressure, right? So let's go. We have this is giving us... 1000 kilogram per meter cube. Now we have acceleration due to gravity g to be given as what? 10 meters per second square. 
then we have the height to be given as 6 meters. Now you can see we have all the parameters in this question, so let's just solve it straight. Pressure is equals to, what is my row? My row is what? 1000, okay, multiplied by, my G is 10, multiplied by, my H is what? 6. Exactly. So we said that pressure is equal to, let's multiply all three to see what we have. So what do we have? We have this is 1,000 times 10 is 10,000. Multiply by what? C is going to give us 60,000. I hope that is clear. So this is what? 60000, right? Now it is measured in what? Newton per meter square. I hope that is clear. So you can put this in standard form to be what? This is 1, 2, 3, 4. So this is 6 times 10 to the power of what? 4 newton per meter square. Oh, that is clear. So this question is quite simple, but you must know that the formula for pressure is force over area or rho gh. Depending on the question given, I hope that is clear. And from what we've gotten so far, the correct option to this question is option B. A 3 meter cube volume of liquid W and density 200 kilogram per meter cube is mixed with another liquid L of volume 7 meter cube and density 150 kilogram per meter cube. The density of the mixture is what? We are given option A 265 kilogram per meter cube, option B 165 kilogram per meter cube, option C 100 kilograms per meter cube, and option D 350 kilograms per meter cube. And before we can solve this problem, we must understand that in this particular question, we have two different liquids, liquid W and liquid L. So let us take their densities and their volume. So you can get their various masses. So let's go. You have the density of liquid W, 200 kilogram per meter cube. Okay. Then we have the volume. The volume of W is given us. 3 meter cube. Okay. Now, the same way we look forward, the density of liquid what L is giving us 150 kilogram per meter cube, and the volume of liquid L is equal to 7 meter cube. Now, we have to get the individual masses of each of them before, before we can solve for the density of the mixture. So, what do you go? If you remember that density, is equals to mass over volume, right? Now, this is what to solve for the first liquid. We now say density of liquid W is mass of liquid W over volume of liquid W. Oh, that is clear. So that is the density of W is what 200 is equals to the mass of W over the volume of W is what? 3. Now, you can say cross multiply the mass of W is going to give me what? 600 kilogram. Hope that is clear. Now, similarly, the same way, density of liquid L is equal to mass of liquid L over what? Volume of liquid L. Do you understand? So we have 150 is equal to mass of liquid L over what? 7. So by the time you multiply, do cross multiply, this is over 1. The mass of liquid L is equal to 150 multiplied by 7. And it's going to give us what? 1050 kilograms. So we've gotten the mass of the liquid L. So for us to get the density of the mixture, remember, this is the density of the mixture is equal to what? The mass of the mixture over what? The volume of the mixture, right? Now, how do we get the mass of the mixture? This is the mass of liquid W plus mass of liquid what? L, okay? So that will give rise to what? This is 600 plus 1050. It's going to give us 1650 kilogram, okay? Now, the volume of liquid of the mixture is equal to VW plus VL which is equal to 3 plus 7. That is 10 meter watt cube. Now the density of the mixture is now equal to, the mass of the mixture is 1650 divided by, the volume of the mixture is 10, right? Now this cancels this, 
automatically our answer becomes 165 kilogram per meter cube. Hope that is clear. Now, this is how to solve this type of problem in case you see it, okay? Now, for what you've got so far, the correct option to this question is option B. The length of mercury thread when it is at 0 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius, and unknown temperature theta is 25 millimeters, 2 to 5 millimeters, and 174 millimeters, respectively. The value of theta is what? So I given option A as 85 degrees Celsius, option B to be 80.0 degrees Celsius, option C to be 75.0 degrees Celsius, and option D to be 70.0 degrees Celsius. This question is under temperature measurement, okay? So we have this mercury thread thermometer, and we also have Celsius scale thermometer. So let's analyze them. So we have this scale. This is degree Celsius. Then we have this scale. This is millimeters, okay? Now, from the question, from the question, when this degree Celsius scale is reading zero degree Celsius, this mercury is reading 25 millimeters, okay? When this one is reading 100 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius, this is reading 225 millimeters. So this is what? We have theta minus what? Zero. So this is theta minus zero divided by, this is the fundamental interval, right? Which is the middle temperature. Why is the upper fist point? Why this is what? Lower fist point, okay? Divided by 100 minus zero. Is that clear? Now this is equals to, now we have 175 minus 25. This is 175 minus 25, okay? And divided by 225 minus 25. Simply let us do our mathematics. So theta minus zero is going to give us what? Theta over 100, right? Now this is equals to 175 minus 25 is going to give me 150. Then divided by what? 200, right? The next thing I'm going to do now is just to do cross multiply. So we have cross multiply. So what do we do next? We have 200 multiplied by theta is equals to what? 150 multiplied by 100. Okay. Now this gives us 200 theta is equals to 15000. Right. So let's just divide both sides by what? I want 200. This divide. Okay. Because we want to get theta, we are going to left with theta here is equals to, right? This cancel. By the time you divide 150 divided by 2, the answer is 75 degrees what? Celsius. I hope that is clear. So if you understand the concept and follow it the way it should, you find out that are going to get the answer at the end of the day. I hope that is clear. Now, from what we've got so far, the correct option to this question is option C. If this video was able to help someone out there, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification button to get notified each time I post videos. And lastly, do not forget to share so that other students that are preparing for this same forthcoming exam can see it and learn from there. And don't forget, I will not rest until you score 90 and above in physics. I will see you next time in the next episode. Bye for now.